Greetings, fellow yogis. Welcome to your 60 minute vinyasa flow. I am Spencer, and that is Amelia. We'll be going through our 60 minute flow today. Good to see everyone. We have a nice, beautiful day outside today, which is awesome. Be able to maybe go out and take a walk. Now let's start in child's pose today. As we move into our mindful meditative breath, we'll be breathing for about five or six minutes. So just settle in, bringing the heels to the hips and the hips to the heels. Just moving into your yoga head, your yoga mind, your yoga breath. Allowing all thoughts to just be acknowledged and accepted and released. And when practicing the postures today, Remember that your goal is to feel stable and comfortable. Make your posture steady and sweet. And then the dualities disappear. Dualism means believing that things in life exist only in opposition to something else. That there's no in between, that there's no middle road. It is that belief that there are only two sides to every story. However, the truth is that there are more than two sides to almost every story. And anytime you think that it is just this or that, that it's either easy or hard in terms of your yoga postures, anytime you begin to think it's me versus them or you versus your own posture, you're only seeing two options and not paying attention to the fact that your postures can be anywhere in between. There is no right and there is no wrong. Think about that during your practice today. Now we'll begin to move to our Ujjayi breath. So now your breath becomes rougher and more coarse. You may be even hearing an audible sound of your breath. You'll feel the vibration of the air as it passes over the back of the throat. You're building heat, you're building fire here with your ujjayi breath. And you'll come back to this breath during your practice when it's feeling hard. And you'll use this breath to take some of that pressure off to give you some ease. That's where I talk about all the time, finding comfort in your discomfort using your breath. And that's what we're doing now, working on the different breathing patterns. You'll take three more deep ujjayi breaths. Now try to make each breath a little deeper than the last and the exhale deeper than the prior exhale. Really begin to build fire, begin heat. If at any time you need to come out of your child's pose, feel free to do so. Again, there's no right, there's no wrong. If you feel discomfort during your practice, that's okay. If you feel pain during your practice, that's not, so, that's not okay. You need to be the judge of that. You know your own bodies. This is the perfect opportunity to get in touch, to learn about your own body. Where are you feeling tightness? Where are you feeling pushback? Where are you feeling challenged? Final Ujjayi breath. And now we'll deepen our breath even further. We'll move into a cleansing breath pattern. So inhale deeply, but this time at the top of that breath, you'll hold and pause for a count of four, three, two, one, and then exhale, opening your mouth. You're putting out a fire. You're putting out a, a candle, three or four feet in front of you. Inhale. Pause and hold. 
and exhale. Extending that breath, lengthening. The quality of your breath is the quality of your practice. The quality of your breath is the quality of your life. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Take three final deep cleansing breaths on your own. And again, I invite you and encourage you to extend that exhale. The inhale kind of takes care of itself. It's the exhale where you're building that lung strength, that pulmonary strength, that cardiovascular strength. Engaging the calming portion of the nervous system using that breath. Take your final cleansing breath here. Now let's extend our arms out long if they're not already there. If your knees are not together, bring your knees together and lift the hips up into the air as we find our way into puppy pose. Arms are extended out long. Does your head in the ground? So I'll get there. Okay. So your knees are directly under your hips. Your hips are touching the ceiling. You have a little bit of a curve in your lumbar spine. Your arms are out long. Now, if you can bring your forehead to the mat, wonderful. If you can bring your nose to the mat, wonderful. If you can bring your chin to the mat, fantastic. Wherever it is comfortable for you. Believe it or not, the amount of the, the, the amount of uh, lowering that you can do is really based upon how much your shoulders are open here. This is a real strong shoulder opener. You're putting your shoulder into full extension here. And as your shoulders increase their ability to extend, that's going to drop the chest down. Now, some people can even get their chest onto the mat. I can't, but some people can. And just breathe. Opening that shoulder joint. You're also working on your hip flexors here. Again, trying to keep the hips directly over the uh, knees if possible. For three. For two. For one. Begin to walk the hands back to the body. We're going to sit the hips so your feet right now are, um, you're on your shoelaces, so your feet are uh, on the top. We're going to sit the hips back onto the heels and find our way in hero pose. So Amelia's from the side angle. I'll be from the front here. So I have my feet rolled out under. Tops of my feet are on the mat. This really takes the foot and ankle into full dorsi flex, uh, plantar flexion. I say it wrong every time. Mm -hmm. This is going into plantar flexion. The plantar surface is the bottom of the foot, the sole of the foot. That's called the plantar surface of the foot. So you're bending the foot down towards the plantar surface. The other side of the foot, the top of the foot, is called the dorsi, the dorsum. And we'll move into dorsi flexion. But basically, you're working on the, um, on the range of motion of the foot and ankle and toes here. Final breath. Now let's lean forward ever so slightly, roll the toes under, and begin to sit the heels back with toes rolled under. Now your foot is in full dorsi flexion. Foot, ankle, toes. I say it frequently, but the first time that I ever was asked to do this, I thought I was going to die after five seconds, honestly. Now I can sit here for a prolonged period of time just by training it over and over and over. But when your toes and foot are in dorsiflexion, that helps with so much of your other practice, down dogs, up dogs, toe stands. If you need to come out of this, feel free to do so. <laughs> the rest of us will take two or three more breaths. Again, come out of whenever you need to do so. Final breath here. And now let's make our way into tabletop. 
So the elbows are right below the shoulders, the wrists below the elbows, knees directly beho below the hips. You can roll the toes under or have your feet flat here, whichever works best for you. We'll take a couple rounds of cow and cat. So in cow, we're gonna inhale, drop our belly, gaze upward, opening the throat chakra, hyperextension of the cervical spine and lumbar spine. And then as we exhale, we bring our chin to our chest, press down into our palms, dome the spine to the ceiling for cat pose. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Full flexion and extension of the spine. And now I invite you to take two or three cow cats on your own. And if you want to move your hips, move your head, move your shoulders, move your neck, do whatever you want here, staying within the cow cat format. And then making your way back to tabletop. Now we're going to roll the toes under, lift our hips up towards the ceiling and find our way in our first down dog of the practice. Now you understand why I wanted you to do the hero's pose with toes rolled under because that's what you're doing right here. Maybe not quite as much, but range of motion in the ankle and feet and toes will actually improve your down dog because you'll be able to get those heels closer to the mat because there'll be more range of motion in the foot. Now there's also hamstrings and calf muscles involved. Now we want to flatten the back here. You can bend your knees as much as you would like to, lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. Puppy pose, so how your shoulders felt in puppy pose is how they should feel here in down dog. Same thing. We're gonna take a vinyasa. Um, actually, let's um, lift the right leg up tall. We're gonna stack the hips here. So right leg up tall, bend the right knee, and then begin to open the hips. You're bringing that right ankle towards the glute. You're rolling that left hip under and the right hip behind you. So one day those hips are beautifully stacked like Amelia's. You're also remaining in down dog. If you want to flip your dog here, feel free to do so. You don't have to, but if you know what I'm talking about and you want to take an early flip dog like Amelia's doing here, pressing the hips up towards the ceiling, left arm extending to the side wall. Exhale, bring the back, right hand back down. You're back in down dog. And we'll go to the other side. Left side lifts up tall, bend the knee, stack the hips. Now you'll be able to see it from the opposite angle. Her left ankle coming towards the right glute. Her right hip rolling under, her left hip nice and stacked on top. That's so nice. If you want to flip your dog here, feel free to do so as that left foot comes down. The left knee is bent. The right leg is out long and straight. Her left arm is extending towards the side wall. She's pressing her hips up towards the ceiling. Maybe the chest even faces the ceiling and release back. Find your way in down dog. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Pedal it out. Now we're going to do a vinyasa ladder here. It's a three-part vinyasa ladder. Follow my cues. You can always come down onto your knees. It's perfectly okay. I always talk about the only reason people don't come onto their knees is the ego. So let your ego go. You can come down to your knees when we do our push-up. Inhale into forward plank, into high plank. Hold here, lift the hips up ever so slightly, begin to engage the core muscles, and then on your exhale, you'll press back to down dog. Now this time we will add a chaturanga dandasana into the, in, into the flow. Knees, should you choose, or you can lower down uh, in push-up. Inhale, forward in the high push-up. Elbows in tight, knees can come down here. Exhale and lower. Yogi push-up or full chaturanga dandasana, elbows in tight. Inhale, you can make your way into cobra. Or if you want, you can go into upward facing dog, which is pressing your feet down into the floor. Amelia's in cobra here. Exhale, press back down to down, uh, press back to push up and press back to down dog. This time we'll do that same thing, but a little quicker. Inhale, forward in the high plank. 
Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pedal the feet, swivel the hips. Bend the knees ever so slightly, peek to the top of the mat, and either step or hop to the top of the mat, find your way in a forward fold. Uttanasana, forward fold. You can grab your elbows one another into ragdoll should you choose, or you can leave your hands hang there. If you're feeling warmed up and stretched out a little bit now and want to go for your heels, feel free to go there. Hips come up tall to the ceiling, crown of the head towards the floor, maybe bringing the chest to the knees or to the thighs. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, the arms sweep up tall. We'll bring our hands to heart center and settle in for mountain pose, Tadasana. Resting pose. We'll move into our sun salutations. We'll take one sun A and one sun B. Follow my cues. One breath, one motion. One breath, one motion. That's what vinyasa is. If you fall behind, that's quite okay. We're all going to meet in down dog at some point. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Step the right foot back. You're in a runner's lunge. Inhale, lift the heart. Let's hold here for a moment. Press the right heel towards the back wall. Nice straight line from the right heel into the crown of the head. A lot of times you'll see people come up with their hips lifted like this. We want to try to lift, bring those hips down. That, that gets there by bending that knee. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. We'll take our first vinyasa flow here. You can come to the knees. Inhale forward in the high push up. Exhale and lower. Inhale, upward facing dog or a cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lifts the right leg up tall. Nice straight leg. Exhale, bend the knee, step the foot to the top of the mat. If the ankle is not directly under the knee, grab the ankle and try to pull it there. Exhale, left foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, we'll sweep the arms up tall. We'll bring the palms together and the heels of the palms together. Maybe extending the index fingers, crossing the thumbs, we're going to set up for our first back bend. So, you're bringing your arms back towards your ears to the best of your ability, your biceps towards your ears. You press down into your feet to lift up tall, then press your hips forward, drop your cervical spine back, and begin to trace a line on the ceiling and take your back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Yeah, that first one's a doozy. The first one is a doozy. Amelia just said the first one's a doozy. It usually is. You're just warming up, so there's no need to touch the back wall, especially on your first one. As we move into additional back bends, you'll be able to go a little bit more. Um, Chest. Shit, hands the shins. <laughs> Exhale, fold, left foot steps back, you're in a runner's lunge. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot back, down dog. We'll take our vinyasa. Inhale, forward in the high push-up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Now we set up for back bend number two. Palms together. Index fingers extended. Press down, lift up, distract the spine, opening up those facet joints. Hips come forward. Your hips are touching the wall in front of you. Your chest is touching the ceiling. Your fingertips are pointing towards the back wall, maybe getting a glimpse of that back wall. Exhale. Hands come to heart center, hands to the side, to Dasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, cleansing breath. Back bends can be panicky. So that's where that breath comes in so handy. Because there's lots of keys to doing a back bend, but one of them is fear. Oh my God, look at what I'm doing here. 
So that's where your breath comes in, that calming nature of your breath, engaging that parasympathetic nervous system. Use that breath, particularly in extended back bends like that. We'll move into um, Sun Salutation B and we'll add Chair Pose Utkatasana. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, flat back. Exhale, fold. We'll sweep our little fingers onto the floor, sit our hips down, arms come out long as we make our way in the chair pose. Now, your arms can be out straight should you choose, or they can be up tall. Hips are sitting back. We're going to be here for a few breaths. Take a peek at your toes. Can you see the toes? If not, your knees probably need to come back, which might mean that you feel like you're falling backwards. Okay. Exhale, forward fold, step the right foot back, runner's lunge. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, left foot back, down dog. Now, should you like, if you are a more experienced practitioner and want to go into a three-legged vinyasa here, right leg would lift tall. Inhale, forward in the high push-up. Exhale, lower, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, right foot drops, upward facing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes. Downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it through, top of the mat. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, left foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. We'll set up for the third and final back bend in this sequence. Now your body's been there. You want to go for it this time? Go for it. I usually like to give her a, an assist in the third one. Can you see the back wall? Exhale, forward fold. Breathe through it, inhale, shins. Exhale, fold, left foot steps back, runner's lunge. Three-legged yogi, three-legged uh, vinyasa yogis, right, uh, left leg lifts, I'm sorry, left, um, step the right foot back. Three-legged vinyasa yogis, left leg lifts. Forward in the high push-up. I was getting ahead of myself. Exhale, lower. Left foot drops. Inhale, upward facing. Now, if you can, roll over the toes. Instead of turning the toes under, try to roll over the toes. Yeah, that might not feel comfortable. Okay? <laughs> but that's not. why we were doing our, <laughs> at the beginning, again, that's a hero's pose with toes rolled under. Same thing. When you do one, the other one will come with it. Inhale, left leg lifts tall. Exhale, step it through, top of the mat. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, right foot forward and fold. Inhale, shins. Exhale, fold. We sweep our fingertips onto the floor and make our way into chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, heels lift up. We're on our tippy toes. So again, you want to do a toe stand? You do those exercises we did at the beginning. If you're comfortable here, stay. If not, you want to move further, maybe lower yourself down into a full toe stand. If you're comfortable where I am, maybe flare the knees out wide, bringing the heels together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Hands come to the floor. Press stand up tall. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let's straighten this out. Thanks. Inhale, arms sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Step the right foot back. You're in a runner's lunge. Inhale, lifts you into crescent lunge. Exhale, right hand comes down to the inside of the left foot. Inhale, sweeps the left arm up tall, and we take a twisting lunge. So, she's got a nice stack here, okay? Left shoulder over the right, left fingertips touching the ceiling, maybe the gaze towards the, uh, towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale, let's bring that left hand to the inside of the left foot. We'll drop the right knee, extend the right leg back, leaning forward on the right thigh. We'll find ourselves in lizard lunge. 
So a couple things working here. First off, your foot is on your uh, your foot is is um, door, is plantar flex. So the top of the foot is on the mat. Your shoelaces. You're leaning forward on that right thigh, opening up the psoas and quadriceps muscles. Your left hip is flexed and externally rotated. You can play with that a little bit. If you want a little bit more, maybe come on to the side edge of your left foot. That will open that up. Now, if you're comfortable on your hands, stay here. If you feel you need a little bit more, you can bring a block or a book or a pillow under your forearms and come on to the block. Or if you're comfortable there, you can bring your forearms onto the floor. The only caveat with both arms being on the floor is that they both have to get there equally. And hold here. This is a nice yin style posture, really lengthening the soft tissue, muscles, ligaments, tendons, joint capsules. We'll take three final breaths here. If you are not on your palms, come onto your palms. Step the left foot, but roll the right toes under. Step the left foot back to meet the right. Lift the hips up tall, find your way in down dog, and you can take an optional vinyasa here. And we will all meet in down dog. Inhale, right leg lifts tall. Exhale, step it through to the top of the mat. Inhale, lifts you into crescent lunge. Exhale, left palm comes to the floor to the inside of the right foot. Inhale, right arm sweeps up tall, twisting lunge. Now you see a really good shot from the front. Arms are stacked, touching my fingers. So the shoulder joint is opening. You're also rotating that cervical spine to the right, so you're getting a lot of spinal rotation here. Inhale. Kicking that left heel to the wall behind you, really engaging the left leg. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Right hand comes to the floor. Left knee drops. Left foot flattens. Lean forward on that left thigh, really engaging the hip flexor muscles there. Lengthening them. And find your way in lizard lunge on the right. How did we get here? <laughs> it's like when we drive. How did we get How here? How did we get here? <laughs> so again, Amelia's opening up that right hip a little bit by coming down. Uh, she's opening and, and coming down onto the knife edge of the right foot. And then play with your lizard lunge here. If you're comfortable on your palms, stay on your palms. If you want to come down to a book or to a block on your forearms, do so. Again, Amelia's down with her forearms onto the mat. Perfect. They're both down equally. And we'll sit here for five or six breaths, just lengthening, lengthening, lengthening that hip flexor on the left here. Now she almost has her entire thigh on the mat, as you can see. So Amelia actually might even be able to move this a little bit deeper by taking this more into a rotation or a twisting posture, which we'll do another time. But because her flexor muscles on her left side here are really, really open now, she's getting that leg all the way down. Final breath here. If you're not on your palms, come back to your palms. Roll the left toes under, step the right foot back, find your way in down dog. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, and then take your optional vinyasa. And settle in. We'll take a couple breaths in down dog. If you want to take a child's pose here, feel free to go there. A nice resting pose here before we move into our next sequence. So child's pose, down dog, whatever suits your fancy, grab a drink of water, wipe any yoga juice off of your forehead.
And then we'll roll the toes under. If you're not in down dog, make your way into down dog. Inhale, right leg lifts tall. Exhale, step it through to the top of the mat. Inhale, lifts the heart. We make our way into crescent lunge. Arms sweep up tall. So let's set up in a nice good crescent here. See a nice knee bend. In a perfect world, that knee is right over the ankle. Her left heel is kicking back. Nice straight hips here. Inhale. Exhale, opens in the warrior two. This is two. That's warrior two. Yes. First time? Forgot. First time. <laughs> Great knee again over the ankle. Now, the left leg is active here because she's pressing the outside of that left foot into the mat. Both arms are nice and straight. Now, what I like to do here with the arms, okay, is we want to do a fly, eagles, fly. And you see I'm wearing my eagle <laughs> shirt today. So we're going to do a fly, eagles, fly. And then we'll just let our arms settle down easily, taking that tension out. Her left Fingertips are touching the wall behind her. Right fingertips touching the wall in front. Look how beautiful the, the shoulders are stacked over the hips. And now we're gonna bend that, right, um, bend that right arm, bring the right forearm onto the right thigh, extend the left arm up tall as we move into side angle. And then we'll sunset that left arm over the left ear and move into extended side angle. Again, she's pressing that left foot away from her. Now, you have a couple options here. You can stay right here. Perfect. Or you can bring your right hand to the inside of the right foot. Okay? That's also perfect. If you're comfortable here and you have a bind in your practice, go for your bind. You don't have to go there. Otherwise, breathe through the posture. If you're in a bind, and you have bird of paradise in your practice, feel free to take it into a balancing. Again, not for everybody. Most of you are probably still in extended side angle. Stay there, breathe through it. Breathe, find comfort in the discomfort. Use the breath, engage, use that ujjayi breath. Final breath here for everybody. If you're not in extended side angle, find your way back there. Left leg back. Inhale brings you back to warrior two. And now we're going to straighten that right leg. We're going to move into triangle pose, trikonasana. So you may want to shorten your, your stance a little bit, some people. Okay? Both hips are facing the back wall. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, begin to lean forward, touch the front wall with your right hand, don't go down yet. Kick the left hip away from you, go as far as you can, and then at the same time, both arms move. You're gazing up towards your left hand here. You see she's got a nice straight line, 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock here, or 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. <laughs> Hairs gets in the way. Look at all the nice triangles here. Here's a nice triangle. Here's a nice triangle. Here's a nice triangle. That's why it's called triangle. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, bends the right knee. Take the right hand in front of the right foot and begin to lift the left leg up tall. I'm too far into the voice. Okay, you have to reset. Yeah. We're gonna move into um, balancing half moon. So right hand comes in front of the bent right knee to start. Left arm goes up towards the ceiling. And then if you'd like to play here, you can begin to lift that left leg off of the mat. Should be a nice right angle here, ultimately. Good time to use a block here for, to bring that Good time to use a block for your right hand to bring that floor closer to your body. If you fall out, that's perfect. I expect you to fall out. I fall out of this all the time. Everybody falls out of this. Inhale. And then ultimately gazing towards the ceiling if you're advanced in your practice for final breath. Exhale. The left palm comes to the floor. 
Now both hands are on the floor. Roll that left hip down a little bit so that the hips are now even and find your way in standing split. Now you can leave your leg or get your leg as high as you would like here. Doesn't have to come too high. If you want to play with your balance, advanced yogis, you know where to go. If you want to move in the candy cane here, you can bend that left leg, maybe reaching around with the right hand, grabbing that foot, and then maybe bringing the left hand to heart center. Ultimately, the nose comes to the shin. I can't get it there. <laughs> but again, fall out, fall out, laugh at yourself. Okay? Are you being... Are, are, are you being hard on yourself or are you being accepting? That's what this is all about. Just laugh at yourself. Fall out. Have fun. Final breath. Cool. <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you are, left leg comes down. We'll sweep both arms up tall. Hands come to heart center. Tadasana mountain pose. So that's a pretty tough sequence right there. <laughs> That's a pretty tough sequence, and you'll be out of breath, and you'll wonder why you can't do all of that, and none of it really makes a difference. Well, the being out of breath does, but why you can or can't do it really makes zero difference. It has nothing to do with your practice. The asanas are just one piece of your practice, and if you do your yoga practice on a regular basis, and you work on the breath, the asanas come. They just do at different various levels, just like I talked about at the beginning. This is not, it's either right or wrong. There's lots of stuff in the middle of it. Top of the mat, inhale, arm sweep up tall. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, fold, we'll step the left foot back, we're on a runner's lunge. No, this did we do the other side? Yeah, I was yeah, here. Yeah, left. Okay. So yeah. Terrifying. Step step the right foot back you're in a runner's lunge. That's what I was stopping and thinking there. Inhale lifts you up in the crescent lunge and hold here. So you see again, press that right heel towards the back wall, left knees over the left ankle. If you'd like to play with a little bit of a back bend here, okay? Feel free to go there. Best way to do that, find your drishti point right above your nose. That's your focus point. And then slowly begin to trace a straight line towards the back wall. Inhale. Exhale brings you back to center. Inhale. Exhale opens into warrior two. We'll settle in here for a moment. Left knee opens up. This is a hip opener on the left and a hip opener on the right. Inhale. Exhale, sink. Fly, eagles, fly. There you go. It's not the same when you're not doing it. Okay. Too fly, eagles, fly. <laughs> and then just settle the arms down. So the, the arms should be light but strong at the same time. Inhale. Exhale. Left elbow bends. We'll bring the left forearm to the left thigh. Right arm sweeps towards the ceiling. Hold here. And then exhale. Sunset that right biceps over the right ear. Notice the nice straight line that Amelia has here from the from the outer edge of the foot to the tips of the finger, lift your hips up for a second. This is what I see a lot. It's really difficult to get those hips down, but that really comes from the knee bend. Inhale, I'm sorry, I knocked her off balance probably. Exhale. Now from here, you can stay right here or you can take it to the next layer. Left hand comes down to the floor or to a block inside of the left knee. Maybe pressing that left knee open with the left shoulder. Next layer, if you have a bind, go for your bind. Those of you that have a bind, you know you do. Next layer, if you have bird of paradise, begin to walk that right foot in, find your balance, and then begin to kick that left foot up, holding here. The bird of paradise is for people that have been doing this for some time, or people that are really, really, really flexible. Everybody else? Breathe into your extended side angle for three, for two, for one. Everybody's in extended side angle. We're going to make our way back to warrior two. 
Left leg now straightens and we're going to move into Trikonasana. So gaze over the left fingertips. Left leg straight, right leg straight, left toes facing the wall, right toes at about 45, about 50 degrees. Begin to lean forward, touch the front wall with your left fingertips. Don't go down yet. Right hip kicks back. Turn your chin to your right shoulder and then simultaneously drop your left arm down, right arm up. Good time maybe to have a block for that left hand, bringing the floor closer to you. Notice the nice 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock straight up. All the beautiful triangles. Inhale. Exhale. Lengthen. Touch the floor with your left hand. Touch the ceiling with your right hand. Maybe at the last moment, opening up the chest a little bit. Exhale. Bend the left knee. Place the left hand in front of the left foot and then begin to lift that right leg up. Again, great time for a block as you find your way into extended balancing half moon. Inhale. Exhale. Fall out, come back, inhale. Exhale, right palm comes to the floor to meet the left, framing out that left foot. Roll the right hip down so the hips are now even, and then kick that right leg up tall, straightening the left leg and find your way into your standing split. Again, great time to maybe have a block there. Amelia's starting to go for some balance here. She fell out, she'll come back, she fell out, she'll come back. Advanced yogis, you want to move in the candy cane here. You can bend that right leg, reach around with the left hand, grab the right foot, kick that knee up into the air. And then if you're comfortable there, maybe bringing that right hand to the chest and then maybe bringing the crown of the head to the floor for three, for two, for one. Right foot comes down to meet the left. We'll sweep the arms up tall. Hands come to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Find your breath. We'll take five deep cleansing breaths here. Good job. Fist pump on that one. That's a tough sequence. Yeah. But there's so many different layers. It's tough regardless of where you go, but Everybody has their different layers and uh, different modifications that they make. Everything's so open now. It's Everything's so, so open. That's good. So from the top of the mat, you're going to step your right foot back to the back right hand corner. We're going to make our way into a wide legged series. So how wide should your legs be? Yeah, three or four feet, wherever you're most comfortable with. Maybe I like to tell people to press the weight into the outer edge of the, of the feet because that really engages the uh, TFL, tensor fascia lata, and iliotibial band, and uh, the muscle on the outer edge of the, uh, the, um, of, of the calf. Today's yeah. word, tensor fascia lata. Tensor fascia lata, That's a good TFL. <laughs> um, we'll bring our hands to our hips to start. Inhale, grow tall. Press the shoulder blades together, and then begin to make your way down, leading with your chin so that your back is flat here to 90 degrees. So she has a nice flat back, hips are over. Actually, you can even move your hips a little forward. There you go. Hold there. If you're comfortable here and want to extend the arms out into a T, extend the arms out into a T. Inhale. Exhale. Let's take the right hand to the outside of the left calf. Right hand outside of the left calf and maybe sweep that left arm up tall. We'll take a twisting wide-legged posture here. Inhale, maybe pulling that left calf in towards this midline of the body with your right hand and release back to a T. Inhale, exhale, we'll take the left palm to the outside of the right calf Inhale, sweeps that right arm up tall, touching the ceiling with the right hand, finding your balance, feeling the inner thighs burn, baby burn here. Exhale, brings you back to a T. Inhale, 
Exhale, hands come to the floor. We'll take a forward fold. Now your hands can come directly below your nose should you choose. Or if you'd like to go for a yoga toe lock on the big toes, feel free to go there. Or if you'd like to bring your hands to the outside of your feet, grabbing the knife edge of the feet or under the heels, feel free to go there. If you have a headstand in your practice and you'd like to mm -hmm. invert here and go upside down, feel free to go there. Let's see if we have one. I'll spot Amelia on her headstand here. Breathe through it. Find the comfort. Maybe move the hands to a different spot. Play. Maybe open the legs up a little bit more. Any flying yogis can begin to make your way back down. Hands come back out into a T. Hands come to hips. Inhale, grow tall. Flat back, standing up. And you're back in wide leg. Let's turn the feet out wide. We'll move into a goddess variation here. So, as you can see, Amelia's hips, so a lot of, she really is able to turn her feet out wide here. But that doesn't necessarily come from the, from the foot and ankle, although range of motion there is important, but that's really hip motion. So she said before that, boy, her hips really felt open. So she may not have been able to get her feet out as wide at the beginning of this class as she is now because the hips are open, and that's where that's coming from. This is full... Um, uh, prone, uh, pronation of the foot, yeah. So we're going to move into goddess. So hands to hips, begin to bend the knees. Knees are tracking over the ankles. Ooh. We're in a flat back here, a kind of an upward facing dog back. Inhale. Exhale. If you'd like to go to the next layer and work with the arms here, maybe bring the arms into cactus arms. Hold here. Now, I go back to what we did at the beginning of the class when we were in hero's pose with toes roller under. Here, we're going to go for it now. So, right heel lifts. Press down into those toes. Does this feel familiar? Yes. This is what it should have felt like 50 minutes ago. Right heel comes down. Inhale, left heel lifts. Press down into the toes on that left foot. Maybe getting the left heel one day right above the toes. Exhale, lower. Guess what's coming next, yogis? I know, I know. Inhale. Exhale, sink. Inhale, both heels lift. There you go, press down. Shaking is good. It's called torsional struggle. There's a fight between antagonistic muscles for three, for two. Paddle uno, and release. Arms sweep up tall, hands come to heart center. Toe heel the feet together. We find our way in mountain pose, to dasana. So we did about three or four different postures today that really were able to be accomplished because of what we did at the beginning of practice when we were in hero pose in both directions, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. We'll move into a balancing series. We'll just do a couple postures before we go to the floor. Um, let's take Eagle today. Set that up. So feet together, arms sweep up tall. Right, swoop the arms under, right elbow under the left elbow. And then either bring the palms together if you can or make a fist, or go for the shoulders. Inhale, exhale, sit. Inhale, right leg lifts up. We're gonna cross that right thigh over the left thigh as high as you can get it. Now, Amelia is able to bind her foot behind her calf, but if you're not, that's perfectly okay. Okay, that again has to do with hip range of motion. Chin, elbows, and knees lined up. It's hard to see if you're not looking in a mirror. In vinyasa, we typically lift the elbows up tall. In other uh, series, 
They sometimes bring the elbows down, but we want to make sure we're standing up tall. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Breaks the posture and bring the right knee into the chest. And we're going to move into warrior three with eagle arms. So stand up tall on that left leg. And then begin to lift that right leg up tall, upper body down, lower body up, upper body down, lower body up. Warrior three, Virabhadrasana three with eagle arms. Really engaging the shoulder joints here. Right hip rolls down for three, for two, for one. Right foot comes down, arm sweep up tall. We'll take it to the other side. I hit the wall. Inhale, exhale, swoosh. Left arm comes under the right, crossing at the elbows, grabbing your hands. Now, I have a shoulder injury right now, so I can do this, but I can't do it on this side. Just can't get it there. So I've been wrapping my arms and holding my shoulders. It's the same thing. So I had to let my ego go for that. Five years ago, that would have been impossible, but now I will let that go. And I'll grab my shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, sit down. Inhale, left leg comes up. Exhale, crosses over the right. Amelia, again, is able to bind the foot behind the calf here, but you may or may not be able to do so. If you right, can't, like that's, fine. that's fine. Yeah, and that's fine how Amelia is right now. Actually, go into that. So more than likely, your leg is like that. And that's okay. You want to think about pointing your toes towards the floor, though. That's where you want to go. There you go. So whether your foot gets behind your calf or not is irrelevant, but we want it to go in that direction. Pressing the elbows together, pressing the forearms together, really feeling those shoulders opening forward, internal rotation. And now on your inhale, you'll break your leg posture, bring your left knee into your chest. And then we will begin to make our way into warrior three. So left leg comes back, upper body down, lower body up, upper body down, lower body up, right leg solid and strong. Your gaze is forward, not down. If you look down, you will go down. So look about three or four feet in front of you. That's your drishti point. Inhale, exhale, left knee comes into the chest. Left knee, left foot to the floor. We find our way into Dasana. We're running out of yoga, people. Everybody make your way to your butts onto the floor. Face that way. Right leg out long. We'll bend that left knee. So we bring that uh, sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. A lot of lymphatic tissue there. Inhale, arm sweep up tall. Exhale, take a slight twist to the right and go for the shin or the ankle or the foot. You're bringing your forehead to your knee here. So you can bend your knee as much as you would like. I haven't warmed up or haven't done anything for the last couple of hours, so I'm not going for it. Should feel a stretch in the hamstrings, stretch in the calf. Toes to the nose, inhale, exhale, fold, inhale, arms sweep up tall, we'll switch the legs out, left leg comes out long, 45 degrees, right knee bends. Now, if your right knee is pretty far from the, uh, from the ground, you can put a blanket a pillow, a block under there, fill that gap. You want to think about pressing that right knee into the floor. Inhale, arm sweep up tall. Exhale, take a slight twist to the left and find your way forward. Shins, ankle, foot. Wherever your body takes you. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, arms sweep up. Let's shoot both legs out long. You can do it this way now. Shoot both legs out long. 
toes to nose. Inhale, sweeps the arms up tall, grow tall, press down into your butt to lift up, suck the belly button in to the spine, and then take your forward fold. Again, grabbing ankles, shins, big toes, yogi's choice. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, arms sweep up tall. We're going to bring our knees. Um, we're going to move into boat pose, Navasana. So knees come up tall. Hold here. Balancing on the sits bones. If you're comfortable where Amelia is, holding your thighs, then you can extend your arms out long. And if you're comfortable here, you can extend the, arm, extend the legs by contracting your quadriceps muscles. And now we're going to make our way onto our backs. So on a count of five, we're going to make our way onto the backs. Five. Go. Begin. Everybody, you out there, go. Four. Three. Two, one, and find your way onto the floor. I have a feeling that that position for Amelia has the sun right in her eyes. Breathe through it, Amelia. Breathe through it. <laughs> okay. Resting here. If there is anything that you would like to do to seal your own personal practice, feel free to go there now. Otherwise, you have found yourself in our final asana of today's practice, Shavasana Corpse Pose. The most difficult of all of the yoga asanas because it requires not only physical stillness, mental stillness as well. Relax your feet, relax your ankles, relax your calves, relax your shins, relax your thighs and hamstrings. Relax your hips, your belly, your chest. Relax your fingers, relax your hands and wrists. Relax your arms, relax your shoulders. Relax your neck, relax your jaw. Relax your face, relax your forehead. Relax your crown. Relax your mind.
Begin to allow consciousness and awareness to return to your bodies. If you'd like to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, shake your head yes and no. Just begin to come back. And then if you would like to extend your arms above your head, maybe clasping your hands together one final time, taking a final stretch. Body's nice and open now. And then rolling onto your right side into fetal position. And then making your way into easy seated posture, half lotus or full lotus, wherever your body is right now. Eyes can be closed, hands come to heart center. If you are human, then your feelings and emotions, both pleasant and unpleasant, will inevitably continue to appear. Remind yourself to relax, to acknowledge that everything is temporary, including youth, health, and life itself. All experiences are as transient as clouds in the sky. Anger comes and goes, excitement rises and falls, fear comes and goes, and tears ultimately dry on their own. So practice tenderly watching your feelings and emotions as they move in and out of your mind, just like traffic on a busy street. Timber Hawkeye. If you would like to join Amelia and I in a practice healing ohm, feel free to do so. If you choose not to, that's perfectly okay. We'll take a deep cleansing breath and then a second inhale and exhale to ohm. Inhale. Inhale. Take our thumb knuckles between our eyebrows to our third eye and take a slight bow towards one another. The light in us honors the light in each of you. We thank you as always for allowing us to be your guide in our practice together today. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. 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 Thank you for joining us. Um, it's a lovely day out today. And uh, we hope to see you soon.